with clinical features wise these patient present with chronic cough chronic here means obviously more than 8 weeks in terms of duration chronic cough with copious copious mucus production now often you have to remember that it is not a stable case most of these patients have frequent exacerbations frequent exacerbations when this mucus becomes mucopurulent exacerbations are mostly because of infections so this mucus production becomes mucopurulent so that's a usual story someone having long standing cough presenting with frequent exacerbation otherwise there is increased amount of mucus production but during exacerbation it becomes mucopurulent right okay now when you see such a patient you start with evaluation using a chest x-ray you might have done the pft where you would have already got an obstructive picture but you do a chest x-ray you might have evidence of bronchiectasis but the better investigation would be doing the hrct because the ct will help you precisely locating the segments of the uh, lungs where the bronchiectatic changes are present so on the hrct you will be able to see those dilated abnormal bronchi right now this dilation particularly in case of the tubular bronchiectasis leads to presentation in the form of two important signs one is called as tram track sign you know the trams right the ones that are running in kolkata tram track sign so their track and the second one is known as ring sign or signet ring sign you can call it as ring sign or signet ring sign these are better appreciated on a hrct rather than on your chest x-ray these are particularly about a patient having tubular bronchiectasis in other cases anyway you will see the varicose nature of the bronchiectasis or you will be able to see the cystic nature of the bronchiectasis now what additional information hrct will tell you is in case of the bronchiectasis whether it it will tell whether it is diffuse versus focal and if it is focal whether it is affecting upper lobes more or lower lobes more and it will also tell whether it is proximal more or distal more right distal means towards the periphery of the lungs proximal means towards the hilum of the chest right so if the bronchiectasis is more towards the hilum you can say it is central or proximal bronchiectasis and when it is towards the periphery towards the pleura you can say it is peripheral now that definitely gives some clues towards the diagnosis okay like for example we were talking about the allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis or alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency in these cases it is usually central towards the hilum okay so that's the hrct now hrct might hold additional clue for example look at this image now what is this image this is image of a patient who is having cystic bronchiectasis you can see all this cystic dilatation more extensive and severe and you can see that the bronchiectatic changes are spreading out towards the periphery or in other words i can say this is more diffuse this is more diffuse this is not focal right when i say diffuse i would be mostly expecting congenital causes more than acquired this is actually hrct of a patient who has william campbell syndrome william campbell syndrome in which there is destruction of the cartilage of the airway leading to this cystic dilatation and once there is cystic dilatation obviously recurrent infections and further complications do ensue okay let me show you one more the hrct right look at this hrct in this hrct i'm sure you're already looking at the cystic dilatation of the bronchi up and you're also look, noticing that it is more diffuse and more extensive spreading out from proximal to peripheral so it is more diffuse i think you agree on that okay apart from that if you notice the tracheal tree you will notice that it is quite dilated right the tracheal tree is dilated so this dilation of the tracheal tree is because of the tracheo congenital tracheo bronchomalacia right so which syndrome we spoke about when we spoke about congenital tracheo bronchomalacia right we spoke about what is known as munier kun syndrome so this is a hrct of a patient with munier kun syndrome it again more diffuse as i've already told you congenital okay now we are going to see one more hrct in this hrct this is very typical so the two hrct we have seen were cystic bronchiectasis now this is a typical hrct of a patient with tubular or cylindrical bronchiectasis okay so look at the image in this image you probably can appreciate a parallel 
dilatation right the bronchial tree as it is dividing it is not getting narrowed down there is a parallel dilatation so as the bronchial tree progresses it should keep becoming narrower but we are not seeing that they are all running parallel lines i can draw multiple of these parallel lines right can you make a note of that exactly multiple parallel lines so this is looking like a cylinder or a tube and that's why we call it as tubular and if you look at this image the bronchial tissue is more focal i can say it's more towards the hilum yeah i do see that there is some peripheral bronchial tissue but it is relatively predominantly affecting the proximal or central okay so this sign of dilated bronchial tree looking like two railroads is what is exactly called as tram track sign some books do address this as railroad sign that's perfectly fine that's same railroad sign or tram track sign now in the image you will also notice that when you catch these dilated bronchi end on instead of seeing them along their axis when you slice through that when the hrct slices through that you will see such images right now this is what is known as signet ring sign or ring sign signet ring sign or ring sign why is it called a signet ring sign when you look at an adjacent blood vessel you can probably uh, the resolution is poor but you can probably appreciate it here so this is your dilated bronchi and what you see here is a blood vessel so when you look at an adjacent or an accompanying blood vessel when the diameter of the bronchi is more than 1 and 1/2 times the diameter of the adjacent blood vessel it looks like a diamond ring it when it is present we say the signet ring sign is positive and it looks like a diamond ring so some books also calling this signet ring sign they also call it as diamond ring sign diamond ring sign both of these are signs of tubular bronchiectasis specifically okay apart from that you might also have some large airways in patients with the bronchiectasis which are loaded with mucus that might give rise to what is known as finger in glove sign more typically described in patients with allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis which i have already discussed in that video right so this is how we approach the diagnosis imaging is the mainstay of diagnosis obviously you will be looking for presence of other clinical features and you will also be looking at the nature of the bronchiectasis and its distribution that might give you a clue towards the diagnosis